This is Leos Posha, a Hungarian mathematician born in Budapest on December 9, 1947. As far as mathematics goes, Budapest is best known as the birthplace of Paul Erdős 34 years earlier. Erdős was an unforgettable personality with a once-in-a-generation fervor for mathematics. Erdős wrote around 1,500 papers in his lifetime and worked with hundreds of mathematicians including the young Posha. In 1959, Posha was a mere 12 years old, yet already knew all of high school mathematics. His mother was a math teacher and so certainly knew how bright he was. Her friend, Roja Pater, another Hungarian mathematician, thought it would do Posha some good to meet with the brilliant mathematician who had also been a child prodigy. And sure enough, Paul Erdős had just returned to Hungary from a number theory conference in the United States. So the two met for lunch, and while the 12-year-old Posha ate his soup, Erdős gave him the following problem. Prove that among the first 2n positive integers, any collection of n plus 1 of them must contain a relatively prime pair. Let's make sure the problem statement is clear and see how long it takes you to solve it. Positive integers, of course, are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And relatively prime numbers are numbers with no common factor greater than 1. For example, 6 6 and 9 aren't relatively prime. This, of course, because they do have a common factor greater than 1, namely 3. On the other hand, the numbers 8 and 9 are relatively prime. They clearly have no common factor greater than 1. So then, let's see an example of the problem statement in action with n equal to 5. If n is set equal to 5, then of course 2n is equal to 10. And n plus 1, the number of integers we are selecting, is equal to 6. So the result asserts that no matter which 6 positive integers we select from the first 10, it's guaranteed that our collection will have a relatively prime pair. For example, maybe we select 1, 3, 4, 7, 9, and 10. So, among the first 10 positive integers, we've selected 6, and indeed there is at least one pair in our collection of relative primes. 1, by definition, is relatively prime to all of the numbers, 3 is relatively prime to 4, and 7, and 10, 4 is relatively prime to 7 and 9, and 7 is relatively prime to 9 and 10 and 9 is relatively prime to 10. And it really shouldn't be a huge surprise that when we're only selecting among small numbers, a lot of them will fail to have factors greater than 1 in common. Indeed, no matter what 6 of these positive integers we select, the result will hold that at least 2 of them are relatively prime. And again, the case is true that, in general, among the first 2 n positive integers, any collection of n plus 1 of them, think 1 more than half of the total, must contain a relatively prime pair. Now, in this example, we had a bunch of relatively prime pairs, but indeed, it is the case that n plus 1 is important. If we were only required to select n integers, then it wouldn't follow that a pair of them must be relatively prime. Let's try this again with n equals 5, so 2n equals 10, but let's say we're only going to select 5 integers instead of 6. Again, we're selecting among the first 10 positive integers integers, and now since we're only selecting 5, we could select 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And now we have a collection of 5 positive integers among the first 10, where no pair in our collection is relatively prime. We know that, of course, because we've only selected evens, so no two of them will be relatively prime. They all have a factor of 2 in common. Again, this is simply to say that if we were only required to have a collection of 
n positive integers, the result wouldn't follow. But since we specifically require n plus one integers, that's what forces this to be true. Now, if you didn't already figure it out, these examples might have clued you into the solution, which I'll give now. 12-year-old Leosh Posha finished his soup and announced his solution to Erdish. He said the two are neighbors. Indeed, if two numbers are neighbors or consecutive, then they must be relatively prime. This is because if D divides A and D divides B, then D divides A minus B. For example, four divides 20, and 4 divides 12. So it should be no surprise that 4 also divides the difference 20 minus 12, which is 8. Another example, 7 divides 35, and 7 divides 14. Of course, it's no surprise that 7 also divides their difference 35 minus 14, which is 21. When two numbers a and b are consecutive, then this difference, a minus b, is equal to 1. And the only thing that divides 1 is 1. Hence, the only possible common factor for consecutive numbers is 1. So they're always going to be relatively prime. The key in our problem is that if we select n plus 1 numbers among the first 2n positive integers, then we must select at least one pair of consecutive numbers. If we try to avoid selecting neighbors or consecutive numbers by selecting every other number, then of course we can only get half of the total, which is n numbers, and we need to pick n plus 1 of them. Thus, it's not possible for us to select every other number, since since we have to pick n plus one of them, not just n of them, so we're forced to pick at least one pair of neighbors, which will be relatively prime as desired. It's a simple problem and solution, but it had taken Erdish himself 10 minutes to come up with this quick and easy solution. And the child Posha did it in the few minutes that he spent eating his soup. Erdish thought that this demonstrated that Posa was on the same level as the legendary Carl Friedrich Gauss, who, stories say, added the first 100 positive integers in an instant as a schoolboy. Here's Carl Friedrich Gauss pictured as a pigeon as part of the pigeonhole principle pin set which is available exclusively at mathshin.com, link in the description. You can get clothing and accessories inspired by some awesome mathematics, and I'd really appreciate it if you checked it out. Leosh Posha would go on to complete significant amounts of mathematical research, including a proof of what is now known as the Erdős Posha theorem in graph theory. Yet his full commitment would eventually go to mathematics education. And in 2011, Posha won the Sishenyi Prize, an award given to those who have made outstanding contributions to academic life in Hungary. Of course, while students and educators of Hungary could celebrate and appreciate Posha's contributions, Erdős, having love only for numbers, reacted to Posha's abandoning mathematics research in his typical way. Posha is dead. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and unsort the table If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded Psychosomatic habits why you so so